In this video, we are going to explore factors in 3D Coat. It's sometimes referred to as vertexture, and that's because it applies a texture per vertex, whereas vertex paint, which is somewhat similar, applies just color per vertex. Let me try to show a key difference between factures and vertex paint. It's not a replacement for vertex paint, but it can be the right option in certain situations. And let me zoom in. I'm going to hit the W key to turn wireframe on. On this vertex paint sample, you can see varying levels of density. The vertex density is much lower here on the right hand side, and then sort of a medium level density and a higher level. This helps demonstrate with vertex painting, the higher the vertex count, the higher the texture resolution you have. As you may know in 3D Coat, when you're working on sculpt objects, you have the ability to subdivide dynamically, and you can also use certain tools like the shift menu to reduce under your brush. You can also add additional detail here, but the downside to doing this is that in a large scene, it can get very heavy very quickly, even when you try to optimize the mesh this way. This is where factors can help by providing a better alternative in some situations. A user can achieve high levels of texture resolution without high vertex counts. I'm going to unhide a few layers here. That's a decal with factures, and then with a vertex paint sample, we cannot obtain the same crisp edges even with a large number of vertices. Let's turn wireframe back on again. When I zoom in, you can see that with vertex paint, it will blend color from one vertex to another. It's even more apparent here where the mesh density is very low. If we go to the right with our factor sample, we can clearly see that the mesh density is much lower than on the left side of our vertex paint sample. Before I go any further, I want to quickly explain the different mesh types in 3D Coat in order to help prevent confusion for new users. Factures and Vertex Paint both work strictly on sculpt objects, and they store color, depth, and glossiness information on the vertices rather than on a UV map. What is a sculpt mesh? It's an object that's created in the sculpt workspace or imported into it. This includes voxels, which are volumetric pixels, as well as surface mode, which involves a triangulated mesh with dynamic subdivision or decimation. A paint object is something that has been imported into the paint workspace. In this example, we are in the paint workspace where you can notice different meshes occupying the same 3D space in the viewport. This is because sculpt objects share the paint tools within the paint workspace. Here in the lower right corner of the paint workspace, you can see a copy of the sculpt tree panel. This allows you to hide, unhide, and even ghost different sculpt objects right here in the paint workspace. Let me hit the W key to turn wireframe on. And now I'm looking at a low polygon UV mapped paint mesh. When you go to the paint objects panel, you can hide and unhide, even lock the different objects from being edited. I'll now go back to the sculpt tree panel and unhide the sculpt object. With paint objects, I will hide those so that we can see only the sculpt object. I'll go to the upper left hand corner in the list menu. I will select the sculpt workspace, which is its native environment. And once again, it merely borrows the paint tools in the paint workspace. Let's now go to the retopo workspace in order to see the third mesh type, which is, of course, a retopo mesh. This is generally a low polygon mesh built on top of a sculpt object in order to bake all the high resolution details down to a low polygon object like this. During that baking process, what happens is 3D Coat will send a copy of that retopo mesh here into the paint workspace. And it will also set up your paint layers accordingly. I will hide the sculpt objects, unhide the paint objects. With those mesh types explained, I'm now ready to return back to my original scene. What I want to do at this point is go to the factures workspace 
and then start with the vertex your palette in the upper right hand corner. This is where you will either access or create new factures or vertextures. To create a new one, just click the plus icon. You'll then be presented with a pop-up panel that is virtually identical to the vertexture settings panel. You can name your facture, and then you can locate the different maps for color, gloss, roughness, metalness, and normal map. The next section will cover the various forms of projection mapping. Let's begin with uniform cube mapping. Let me try to use something like this. And I'm going to paint. As a side note, 3D Coat will not only try to paint with the texture, but also the foreground color. If I don't want a foreground color applied, one thing you could do is you could click on it and just make it white so that there is no color tint applied, or you can right click just like you would in Photoshop. I will go ahead and begin painting. And you're probably thinking this is not looking so good, but that's okay because one of the major features of Factress is that it allows the user to make adjustments after applying paint to the model. I will go ahead and adjust the scale. I can also adjust the rotation. I can even use U and V shift for vertical or horizontal shifting. And then of course I can increase the bump level. Let's bring that up to 10. So it's more exaggerated. Let's take that down to one. So let's put it at about three. Okay. A roughness, we can leave it at that or maybe adjust it to 0.8. And obviously we can adjust our metalness as well. For normal mapping, you can change the type here. Now create a new blank layer by clicking on the plus icon in the lower left portion of the panel, and I'm gonna select a new factor material. Let's also choose the fill tool, and I'm gonna click on the foreground color swatch in order to pick a different color to tint the material with. Right click to enable it. And I will just go ahead and click the fill. So I definitely want to make sure to check my tool options first because 3D Coat remembers the last settings you chose. And the last time I chose the fill tool, I used the fill with eraser mode in order to erase all the texture from the model. Let's now set that back to the default option, which is fill with color. We can now fill the entire object by clicking on the model. One thing you'll notice is how 3D Coat tinted the texture with the foreground color. We can see a little bit of tiling in certain areas, but we will address that momentarily. What we would want to do is create a new layer, and then we can make some adjustments and paint over those to blend them in. But for now, I want to show a projection type that will help break up the inherent pattern that is caused by tiling. This projection type is called uniform cube mapping. Let's scale it down until we begin to see this repeating pattern. Now you can see 3D Coat will try to break it up by rotating the tiles a bit, as you can see here. Let's switch to plain cube mapping. With a texture that has a linear flow, such as bricks or elongated stones, you may not want any rotation. In such a case, plain cube mapping would be a more preferable option. We'll go back to uniform cube mapping. All right, so let's look at how we can break up some of the seams that we see here. I'll first add a new layer, then switch to the paint tool, and 
I want to use a draw mode that modulates the opacity with brush pressure. So let's choose the second one and I'll choose a softer brush alpha. And I can brush along these seams. It may appear that there are no changes as I brush, but it's actually painting using the very same settings. Making adjustments to the settings will let me see those changes reflected on the object. For demonstration purposes, I think this will suffice. You could also use the erase tool in order to touch up certain areas. In order to achieve a more gradual transition between separate textures, you will definitely want to use separate layers. You can right click over a vertexture to delete, share the item, you can edit the vertexture, but you can edit it here in the settings as well. You can apply it to the entire layer, you can normalize the color texture, you can generate a normal map from the color. For example, if all you have is just a single photo and you don't have a normal map, then 3D Coat will try to generate one using heuristics. You can refresh the preview or you can move it to another folder. Next, I want to demonstrate the roads tool. I will first paint a comparative sample using the paint tool. As you brush, it's projecting a static image onto the model. However, if I now use roads, it's going to dynamically rotate the image along the brush stroke. Fracture spot is pretty much self-explanatory. It's going to apply a single instance of the texture. Okay. And that's going to conclude this look at fractures or vertexture in 3D Coat. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.